Abundant Water presents a step-by-step -step guide to do-it-yourself clay water filtration. Earth is the planet of water. 70% of the planet, including most of you, is water. However, as world populations grow, clean drinking water is becoming a scarcer commodity. Over 5,000 children in the world die every day from waterborne illness. In this video, we're going to show you a cheap, easy way for making clay water filters that can save you money and provide you with clean water every day. We'll guide you through the process of sourcing the materials you'll need to make filters, mixing clay to become the best material possible for making a filter, molding the clay into an efficient and easily maintained filter, Kiln firing the wet clay to transform it into a finished ceramic filter. Assembling the filters and testing them so that they are ready to be used in a filter system and provide you with clean fresh water. Abundant water filter systems clean particles from water as small as 5 microns, filtering out many types of harmful organisms. These filters are then given to people in rural areas, giving them access to clean, fresh water. Abundant water. Clean water for everyone. Abundant Water's Guide to Clay Water Filters, Part 1. Sourcing the Materials. It's important to gather all of the materials you're going to use before you start making filters. We're first going to need a plastic tarp that we'll use as a work surface. Our main ingredient is dried, sifted potter's clay, which can be found anywhere in the world at potter or brick shops. We'll also need a burnout material. We use dried coffee grounds, but you could use crushed charcoal or even dried rice husks. A sieve is necessary to ensure even mixing of the clay with our burnout material. We use a lined PVC plastic pipe as a mold for shaping filters. We use rubber tire straps to hold the two halves of the mold together. We use metal knives and spoons to help us smooth and sculpt the clay. The best tool for cutting clay is a simple garrote made with two wooden dowels and fishing line. Rolling pins help us to hollow the center of the filter. We use wire brushes to help us increase the surface area of our filters. A grout compound will allow us to attach PVC pipe fittings to the finished filters. This PVC fitting will allow you to attach the finished filter to other PVC plumbing pipes in your filter system. Various plastic buckets and bottles can be employed to complete your finished filter system. In the next video, we'll learn how to properly mix clay to achieve the best filter results. Abundant Water's Guide to Making Clay Water Filters Part 2 Mixing the Clay Mixing the clay is one of the most important steps in the filter making process. Sifting your dry materials ensures equal particle size and prevents clumping. First, sift your burnout material. We're using old coffee grounds from Joma, our local coffee shop. You'll also want to sift your dried clay. The finished filter material is exactly half burnout material and half dried clay. After sifting, we have to mix thoroughly for even distribution of our material. Take your time to mix the clay and burnout material completely so that the whole product becomes the same color. If there are clumps of one material, your filter will not work correctly. Form a well in the middle of the dry mixture and begin adding water. Slowly pour in the water and begin mixing our wet clay. Keep slowly adding more water and mixing with the hands to form wet clay. Knead the dry clay into a wet compound. When some of the clay has achieved the right consistency, set it aside and continue adding water until all of the dry material becomes moldable wet clay. Once the dry material has become wet clay, it's time to begin kneading the clay. We use our feet to compress the clay and work it into the perfect consistency for making clay water filters. We use the tarp to help roll the clay back into shape. Then we continue walking the clay. 
It should take about 15 to 20 minutes of kneading and rolling to get a proper mixture. Once the clay is ready to be worked with, we can move on to the next step, molding the filter. Abundant Water's Guide to Clay Water Filtration, Step 3, Molding the Filter. We're going to start with some of our properly mixed clay. Beat and knead the clay to get it ready to work with. Then roll it into a nice rounded shape. Next, we're going to slap the clay into the mold. Use your garrote to cut off any excess clay. Cut out the two sides of the channel using your knife. Scoop out the channel with a spoon, pulling, not pushing, through the clay. Use water to wet and smooth the clay. Cut off the excess clay with your fishing line garrote. Do both halves, continually smoothing and removing excess clay. Wet the edges of both sides of the filter so that they'll stick together. Join together the two halves of the filter and tie them together with our rubber straps. Next we're going to use our bamboo rolling pin to compress the clay into the mold. Cut off any excess clay. Use your bamboo rolling pin to compress the clay. Wet and smooth the inside seams of the filter, making sure that both halves are properly joined. Now it's time to roll our end cap. Mold the clay into a plug shape like this. Wet the plug and fit it in the end, continually pushing and smoothing, making sure that it's a nice tight fit with the rest of the filter. Use the end of the rolling pin to make sure that the plug joins the filter completely. Cut off any excess clay. To smooth the outside with a knife. We use the dowel from our garrote to write on each filter, identifying the maker and the date each filter was produced. This stage of your filter is complete. It will need to dry for three days on a rack. The clay filters have been drying for three days and will hold their shape. Now we remove them from their plastic molds and begin to smooth the outside with a knife. Next, we're going to trim the excess clay from the filter. We use the roll test to ensure that each filter is properly molded. Next, we're going to use wire brushes to scrape the inside and the outsides of our filters. This is going to increase our surface area and allow more water to pass through. Next, we'll rack dry the filters for two or three more days, and then we'll sun dry them another three days. Once the filters are dried, it's time to move on to the next step, firing in the kiln. Abundant Water's Guide to Clay Water Filtration, Step 4, Firing the Kiln. On the bottom of the kiln, we place firewood and charcoal. Then there's a screen rack to hold our filters. Then we add our filters. Our kiln holds about 40. Here you can see the bottom fire loaded and ready to burn. Plastic in this clay acts as a temperature gauge to know when the filters have reached a high enough temperature to become ceramic. When they do, the plastic will melt. The bottom of the fire is started using rice straw as a kindling. It takes a few minutes to get the fire burning properly. Once the fire is burning, you'll want to get the temperature up to about 900 degrees Celsius. Do this step slowly, giving yourself several hours. Once it has reached 900 degrees, you can begin putting rice straw on top of the kiln. Please take note that the straw will catch fire. The burnt straw will create a vacuum that keeps the heat inside of the kiln and helps us to maintain a constant firing temperature of 900 degrees. 
This is to avoid temperature shock to the filters when heating and cooling to avoid cracking. Hold at 900 degrees for several more hours, then stop adding fuel. The next morning, the kiln and the filters should be cool enough to touch. Carefully remove the top grating, always testing for areas that are still hot to the touch. This is how our PVC temperature gauge should look when it's finished. Now we're going to give a thorough quality control inspection of the filters. These filters look good and are ready to be used. However, some filters are cracked and unusable. The seams were not properly sealed when the two halves were formed so this crack developed during firing. Cracked or damaged filters can be reused or recycled. Luckily, the vast majority of these filters are ready to move on to the next step. After we pack up the quality filters, they are ready to be assembled. Abundant Water's Guide to Clay Water Filtration, Part 5, Assembling the Filter. In this last step, we're going to put our final filter together. First, we need to clean the filters with water and a wire brush. Make sure you have your powdered grout compound ready. We're going to mix the dry grout compound with water to make our grout. Keep adding a little more water and mixing the grout together to form a consistency similar to what you see here. Next, wet your filter. Spread the grout around the edges of the PVC fitting. Spread it on thick enough so that it will fill the filter's hole. Spread it completely around the diameter of the PVC fitting. Now, carefully insert the PVC fitting into the filter. We tap the side of the filter to help remove excess water from the grout. We use this guide to ensure a standard size for each filter. Continue filling the hole with grout, tapping out the water. Keep spreading the grout until it covers the rim of the filter. Always remember to tap the filter to remove excess water. Use a damp towel to begin smoothing and cleaning the grout. You can use your fingers to smooth and shape the grout. Remove any excess grout from the filter. Tap any remaining water out and give the fitting any final adjustments. Wipe off any remaining excess and prepare the filters for storage. They'll need a few days for the grout to cure. Every filter is different, so we need to perform a flow test to test the rate at which water flows through them. We attach each filter to a gravity-fed valve system. We test the volume of water that passes through each filter over two minutes. After two minutes, the valves are shut and the water is weighed. We calculate the flow rate by weight in grams minus the weight of the container multiplied by 0.03. We then record the flow rate and mark it on each filter. Now, the filters are ready to be installed in any plumbing configuration that you can imagine. Here are examples of several different types of residential configurations. You can use buckets or bottles of any variety to make your system. Industrial filter systems can be installed into existing plumbing and use more than one filter. Abundant water, clean water for everyone.